It's time. The sound design. What is going on Rocket Parrot sound designers? Welcome to the best channel on YouTube for Serum Tutorials. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to make some juicy Reese bases inside of Serum, and this is what they sound like. Oh yeah, that's some fat, juicy Reese's. Um, so, if you guys like that sound, just let me know in the comments, leave a like on the tutorial. Or if you didn't, drop a dislike. It just lets me know how many of you guys actually like the sound. Um, so, what do you say? We go ahead and jump straight into the tutorial. By the way, um, I'm putting out a tutorial every single day. And if you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button if you want daily serum tutorials. I mean, who wants to miss out on that? Am I right? Anyways, guys. So we're gonna start off with our basic sawtooth waveform. And now the defaulted patch is not a sawtooth. What it actually is, is I say this every time, it's a sawtooth waveform at a 180 degree phase and it is inverted. Um, but you know, that really doesn't make a difference. Our ears can't perceive a difference. So, you know, why does it matter? Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and turn up the unison to six. That means we have, or that way we have more than one copy of the waveform playing at a single time. Now, well in this case we have six. If we turn up the detune, we just want to make that a little bit more detuned. So now we have six copies of the waveform playing at one time, um, but we can already start to hear that basic re-sound coming into play. Um, one of the things that I did was I turned on the random phase and this is going to give us a huge booming effect and it's really going to make it make our re space sound a little bit different than um, how most people make them because most people do uh, two oscillators and they have just the fine tuning a little bit different on each and that creates a very similar effect um, because we have more than one waveform with a uh, with opposite pitches which we're actually doing here with a unison uh, effect here so if that could kind of make any sense we're doing it a little bit different. So with the random phase down to zero, we basically cancel out um, any of the possible starting places for the phase. Um, so each of these individual waveforms, when we have the randoms spread up to 100%, they can start at what any particular phase, doesn't matter where. But when we have this down to zero, they all start at the exact same spot. And that creates a really unique sound that sounds like this. Well, if I turn on the detune a little bit, you can hear. Okay, it doesn't make as big of a difference when they detune's up, but still, you know, the style's very prominent in rhythm, but we're actually making it sound good today. <laughs> Anyways, into the reverb here. Uh, not the reverb, the filter. We're gonna be using a reverb filter. And I just realized, I think this may be the second tutorial in a row that I'm using the reverb filter. I actually don't use it that often, um, but, like I say all the time, reverb filter is what you make it. A lot of producers use it the same way, and when you do that, it starts to get repetitive. Like in dubstep scene, that's really when the reverb filter is a big no-no. Um, when it's used incorrectly, of course. Uh, but anyways, yeah, we're gonna be modulating the cutoff back. If I turn off the filter, turn it back on. You can hear slight tone sh uh, changes throughout the entire thing. And the reverb filter is really just here to kind of like make our particular Reese bass sound a little bit more one heavy, um, which we're gonna be doing with the drive, uh, making it sound a little bit more booming and distorted, as well as it's just gonna be making it sound cooler. That's, that's one of the things that the reverb filter is really awesome for. Um, so let's turn up the resonance. <laughs> And of course, the drive to 100%. Okay, master, that's a little bit too too loud for us to handle right now. We're gonna dampen it. So let's turn the, uh, the voicing onto mono and legato. And we want a little bit of portamento. But the thing that we're gonna be doing to really make this thing sound good is see our little pitch bender here, our little slider? Um, we're just going to turn the slider up to 24. So now we have the ability to uh, change the pitch up 24, transpose it up 24 semitones. And as you can hear, 
um, as we increase the tune of it, it is, of course, wait one sec. It is, of course, I'm going to increase the rate because frequency is directly related to pitch. So the higher the pitch, the more vibrations we have. Uh, I don't mean the more vibrations. Ah, oh, yeah, you know what? The more vibrations in a single cycle um, that we will have because they're moving at a faster rate, which creates a, a higher octave or a higher pitch. So we have it down for the most part. We have it nailed down, uh, but we still got to change it up a little bit here. The LFO, I just kind of left this on one half, the rate to one half, and I put the mode on off. That way, whatever note that we press, it'll just kind of continue through, and it doesn't necessarily have a starting place. Now, we are going to be creating a notch filter um, inside of the EQ here, so go ahead and select our peak shape, and we're just going to be dropping the gain down to zero. Leave the Q factor alone, so we're not adjusting the width at all. Uh, but we will be adjusting the frequency and moving it up, modulating up. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. Now we just gotta turn on a compressor, and you know, just by putting on multiband, we can easily make the sound a little bit higher quality. Okay, that is so quiet. Forgot to turn the master back up, of course. Let's turn on a little bit of hyper, give it, give it, or no, no, no hyper. I don't like the way it sounds on a respace. So we could just give it a little dimension, give it a little size here. And that's how I created the sound. Now, if you want to hear it in context. Pretty cool, right? I mean, there really wasn't much to it. Um, another way that we can potentially make a resound is, um, I already discussed this, but... Oh, one sec, one sec. This is a much cleaner sounding one, but I personally like the way it sounds when we have a little bit more voices. What if we turned up the unison on here? Yeah, not a huge fan, but like I said guys, this is your sound, this is not mine, you guys now have complete control on however you want to use this in your song, so let me know in the comments what you guys think of this particular patch, I think it's pretty dope. I'm very tired right now, so this tutorial is not as like hyped up as it used to be, as it usually is, but without further ado, guys, my name is Shane from Rocket Power The Sound, and I will catch you guys in the next serum tutorial.